Halfway through, halfway through. We're my Dell back for the creative core. Uh, thank you guys for joining me again for video three of our editorial magazine layout design tutorial. I think I said that right. Either who. All right, so if you watch the first two videos, um, we've covered how to add images. Video two, we covered how to decide um, your editorial cover image for your editorial. This video, we're gonna be working on the title, all right? Which should be fun. And I think I'm gonna to have to cut my tablet on for this one because I hate using my mouse when it comes to detailed things. So shout out to Wacom. And Wacom, if you're watching this, this isn't a paid advertisement. But if you guys love to sponsor me, I'm open for suggestions or open for collaborations and whatever the term, proper term is. Holla at your boy. All right, so let me get this thing activated because I think it's in sleep mode. I think it's in sleep mode. All right. Let's get started for our, with our titles, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's get to where we left off. All right, so the title of the editorial is Gucci Revolution. So, last video we had revolution. All right, I'm gonna use a mouse right quick before I get into the detailed stuff. And here comes the fun stuff. Title placement. All right, so before I get started, let me go ahead and type in Gucci. You know, it's funny because in the first video when I was trying to figure out what wardrobe she had on, I said it looked like Gucci. And I just thought about it. the title of the name of this editorial is Gucci Revolution. Let me pull up the credits and look at the wardrobe and see what's in the wardrobe. You see, dressing hair by Gucci, dressing hair accessories by Gucci. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Sweater and shorts by Gucci. Gucci. So the whole editor is in Gucci. Well, we got a little Da Vinci in a little chain, all right. Uh, Vince Kamuto. Kam Kamuto? I really need to learn these people's names because the last thing I want to do, the last place I want to be is on the red carpet somewhere at a fashion week, shaking hands with somebody pronouncing their name wrong because that will make me look like an idiot. So, let me get some inspiration right quick. Let me, let me pull up Google right quick. Let me see some Gucci logo. All right, so we got, we got the G's facing in, kind of like the Chanel's facing out. So that gives me an idea. What if we do another G? But we flip it. Let me see what that looks like. But Gucci have their G's facing in. So, um, can you flip this with while it's inside? I guess not. So let's just take that out. And double this again and reflip that again. I don't know if I'm keeping this, I'm just trying it. Alright. Let's let's grab both of these fonts. And while I'm working on this, let's lock, the, lock this image down. So whenever I want to highlight and move all this stuff, 
I'm not selecting the background and messing something up. So let's go to this layer and lock that image down. So we select, you know, the image is not moving. So I want to get both of these G's and I think I want to, um, there we go, spread it out. Hmm. It looks pretty cool. I think I like that. Yeah, I actually think I like that. Now, let's see where I want to, uh, let's group these, uh, control G. And let's just move that out to the side right quick because I want to see what this revolution is going to be at. Do I want it down here? Speaking of, let me see where I want the credits at also. So I'm going to put them here. Now that where foot is. That looks pretty cool. Or maybe right there. That's cool too. What about I want to see? Nah, I don't want the attention drawn away from her face. I think it'll look better, probably cooler right here. And I might align them all the way to the left. Oh, I forgot to select them. I don't know. We'll see. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's bring this in. I like to let make the boxes line up. You can see a little green line. There we go. Just move it out so that they lock in place. And you'll see why I'm doing this. That way, when you select everything, well, you still got this one out of place. There we go. And I think this one. Well, let's see. Okay, Irina, photographer. One of these look double. Let me take that out. All right, Veronica and Irina needs to go out. There we go. Now the boxes are, now if I want to line it to the right, everything goes to the right, everything goes to the left. So, kind of like that. I'm gonna leave that right there for right now. Let's go back to Revolution. Hmm, I'm trying to see if I want them in close. I might actually bring Gucci back in for some more reference if I want to put it in the middle or not. See with titles, I don't care if it's in the middle of the magazine. I'm more focused on the model's face not being in the middle, kind of like this image down here. But seeing that this model's face is over here, it's fine to have your title to me in the middle. Yeah, I think I might want to shrink that down some. Get in the middle, let's see. Oh, what do you guys think? Let me see, let me go back over a little more. This is where the work comes in. This is basically what um, this skill set of this is kind of like what you pick up when, you, when you've when you been doing photo manipulations and retouching. This is a skill really good from an editor's perspective if you have knowledge and experience in Photoshop. Not print design, which would be in design. This is more of, I mean, when it comes to layouts, I think this will be better for someone who has more experience in Photoshop because you have to have an eye for this type of stuff. Also zoom out to, to see it from a distance. You don't want to be looking at it so close. That kind of helps out. So now when I look at it from a distance, I think the tile looks too high. Let me bring it down so I'm about right there. And that looks pretty good. Now it's a little too low. I kind of like that, but if I'm going to do that, I might want to bring that here and align that to the middle. Uh, let me ungroup these. 
And if I'm gonna do that, I'm probably gonna slide this over a little. I think that looks pretty cool. That revolution though, I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is uh, bring it in, crunch it in a little bit. Don't have it so spread out. I think that's it. I think we're gonna go with this right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is duplicate revolution. I'm gonna just hold down Alt and just slide that over. And the reason I'm doing that is because what I'm about to do to this text is I'm about to go to type and I'm gonna create outline. Once you create outline, you can uh, erase some of uh, the, uh, the, the type. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want some of this type to go behind her leg. And in this format, which is, you know, this type tool format, you can't just go in there and erase it. You know, unlike Photoshop, you know, where you can just rasterize the image and then go in there with the eraser and just erase what you don't want. And this you will have to go to create outline. And once you create outline, it turns this image into let me click on this uh this direct select. You see how now everything has anchor points. And since they have anchor points, you can erase what you don't want now. The reason I duplicated it is because if I mess up, I can always have, go and slide that back over and start over. But I've got to the point where I really I really mess up. So now I'm gonna go to my tablet because it's gonna get a little detail. And I'm gonna zoom in. So what I'm, what I'm gonna keep on her, I'm probably gonna keep the end. You know, I might have that, that old weave through her fingers. That would look pretty cool. Let me zoom in. I know you're like, why is it so blurry? Because if you go to view, I have it in typical display. To see it in full resolution, you have to click on high quality display. Once you do that, you can see it in full resolution. So, steps to this, all right? If you ever find yourself in a situation where you want to erase some of the font, the typography, and you want to weave it through the model's hand, or like sometimes on a cover, I would have a, uh, let me show you guys, cover from uh, July. Give you guys an example. Is it this issue? Like this right here. You see what I did with this girl? I got the E hanging from her arm and I got the S going through her fingers. Same situation. You have to rasterize that type or in design you have to create an outline and then you have to go in and erase what you don't want because you can't just do that as a regular type. You can move these as regular types. Now if I just type S and just you know rotate it, I can put it right there but you won't be able to erase it through her fingers. You have to go in there and do it um, after you create it in the outline. So what I do in situations like that when I, I want to weave through certain areas, first thing I do is create it, create, uh, make the text and change it into an outline. Then I go up here and I make sure the display mode is on high display because this is going to be printed in a magazine and you don't want any errors. You don't want to just go in there and you're in typical display and you're like, okay, I'm going to just go in there and just remove that right there. And then when you go print it, it's going to look like crap because you <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't look at it from a de detailed perspective, point of view. Now that I have it in creative outline mode, what I want to do is click on it and I want to drop the opacity so I can see where I'm going and what I'm removing. So let's see, I probably want to have the O go under and come out and go over her fingers because this will look really funny if her finger was, well, if, her, if this finger was sitting on top and this was going under and then came out, no. Nah. Gut reaction is usually the first, the best. So grab a pen tool, 
I'm gonna click out of that. Grab my pen tool. And I'm gonna click on the finger. And I'm just gonna go in there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna teach you guys about pen tool today because that is another tutorial. If you don't know how to use it, we will teach you later. And I'm going to go in and remove this part because I want the, this O to go under her finger. So it's going under and it's gonna come out right there. So let me click there. There we go. So that's my mask. I create, I, I, cre I use this pen tool to create anchor points on top of that as a mask to mask it out. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to my arrow tool with the mask selected, or if you forget to select it, say for instance, you click out of that, all right? So let's click on revolution, Gucci revolution, right? Click on that. And we're gonna click on our mask. Let me see where is it, somewhere around here. You know what, let's go to our layers and I think I've lost it. Compound path, is it right here? No, it's up here. There it is. So let me drag this up close to it, all right? This is our revolution. Now, if it was text, it'll look like this. It'll say, it would have said revolution. But since we see, see revolution right here, that's our duplicate that we slid over to the right. But since we went up here to type and turned it into a created outline, it went from type, which is this, into a path. I mean, a, a compound path. All right. As you can see, once you click on a direct tool, you can see the different paths. So, we're gonna click on revolution and we're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna click on the um, path tool, as you can see right there. And then we're gonna go down to object. And what this is gonna do is gonna remove that piece that we, uh, we masked out that we don't want. And we'll go to pathfinder and go to subtract, all right? Just click on subtract, boom, it knocks that out. So if you want to see it, you know, just click on compound path and just up the opacity. There you go. All right, let's zoom out, see if, if we like that or not. Yeah, that's not bad. I wonder if it would look different if I would have this part go under and then come out right there. No, that, that wouldn't look good because you can tell this is going over. So if we don't have this going under her pinky, our ring finger, then coming out, it wouldn't look like a loop, like right here. Right here in this little area, it wouldn't look like it's looping out. But this right here is looping over to the left, going down, so it looks better. Looks more realistic. But we wanna fix this right here, so we don't want this looking funky. So I'm gonna select the direct tool and we're just gonna highlight this little corner because it's gonna pick up on these two little anchor points. It's gonna pick up on whatever anchor points is in the air. Now if I highlight this right here, then I can move this anchor point right here. See that? But I want to bring these anchor points a little closer to the finger so there's no gap right there. So I wanna hold, hold, hold down the direct tool pick those two matter of fact probably not that I don't even want this anchor point right here what I want is this corner so I'm gonna just pick that corner and just bring it up right there and bring it up a little more and we'll bring that a little more closer to the skin and just a little more I guess I, I am gonna select that same with this one. This you can see a little gap, so let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit. All right, cool. Huh? What if we put the fingers over the end? Let me think about that. Do we want to do that? Do we want to do that? Let's have some fun. Let's see something right quick. Let's let's pick this end. Drop the opacity. What if we had this end going through this finger? What if, what if her ring finger is just over top of that? 
Cause the pinky is too low. As you can see, it's on her leg, so it's dropping off. Or what if we had the whole end go under all three of her fingers and then come out on top of the pinky? Decisions, decisions. See, this is kind of where your artistic, you know, skill kicks in because you, you have choices to make. You know, I kind of like just the ring finger coming out. Let's see. Good thing about this, if you start off with one finger, you can always go back and remove the two if you want to remove the other two. So let's get the pen tool. Peep a pen. Let's, let's go in here. Oh, control Z, go back. Oh, too much. Here. All right, same thing. Got that selected. Let's select the compound path for object, pathfinder, subtract. And let's uh, select that and bring it back to 100%. See what it looks like. Yeah, I like that. With just the ring finger. It also symbolizes, you know, marriage, you know, with the ring finger and you got, you know, these biblical items around. You know, like I said, it's telling the story. You know, just have the ring finger pop out. I have people thinking, you know, about marriage and unity and sanctification. You know, it's just, it adds more value to what you're actually doing. Um, I mean, uh, more value to the way you're, you're actually creating the layout. It's telling the story. Now, if I would've did all three fingers, it wouldn't have a person's mind thinking about that compared to just having just that that, that finger that actually has symbol uh, symbolism uh, behind it. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna just stick with that ring finger. And let's go down to the leg. Um, I think I'm gonna hide the V and the O. If I don't like it, I'll backspace it. And is that a foot? What is that? What is the peach thing? It has to be a foot, right? The foot isn't that long, is it? Yeah, I'm saying this is her leg, her right leg. Let me see, this is her foot. That has to be her foot. Jeez, it makes it seem like she has a big foot. <laughs> I don't know. But we're gonna get the pen tool, we're gonna dive in here. Let's, let's go ahead and knock that out. Boom. And as you guys can hear the train in the background, just, just block that out. It always decides to come down when I'm doing my work. It's a pain. But hey, they got jobs just like me, so. All right, so let's select that. Pathfinder, subtract. Let's go in, 100%, see what it looks like. Zoom out. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I just wanna find out what I wanna do with this E. Let's zoom out. We got this R too, I, I don't wanna put the R behind. I don't know, do I? We have the E. Yeah, I think I'm a. Uh, since we're getting creative all the way, let's just go ahead and do it. Let's knock off this piece of the E right here. Or the shoe. Alright. Object Pathfinder. And I just want to decide if I want to put that R behind this little dude, which I my gut reaction is telling me, and I usually go with my gut. So I go ahead and remove this dude. And 
the core of his shirt there. And you don't have to get too detailed off the bat because you can always go back in and, and make the, the slide adjustment with the direct tool. All right. I don't know, that might be doing a little too much, but we're gonna take a look. You know what, I like that, it's real funky. But I don't like this piece of the E. Part of me do like the piece of the E because it kind of lets you know that that is an E, but it is covering the shoe and the shoe is an accessory in the shot, which I really like. It's almost like keep that piece and bring back the R or just leave that piece off. You know what, I, I, you know, I think I'm gonna roll with this. I am going to roll with this. I think we're gonna roll with that, guys. Just one quick thing. I think what I wanna do is play with some colors. Let's take a look at these Gs, which I am going to uh, create outlines for also. And I think I'm going to sample this pink, see what it looks like. Oh no, that's too dark. I do want to do some some color with these. Um, with these G's though. Yeah, that looks sexy. That looks sexy. I like, I like. All right, Revolution, we don't need you anymore. I like that. The color is still not where I want it to be. I don't know if I want it to be more closer to a beige or a pink. But, um... Let's try to get it closer to a green tone, kind of like the background and see what, what that does. All right, if I can find. Yeah, that muted tone is rocking. It plays with the background. That looks, yeah, that's it. I'm rolling with that. That's it, guys. All right, so I'm gonna come back on the next video and we're gonna work on the credits and that's gonna be a wrap for this editorial and we're gonna be rocking, but yeah, I'm rolling with this. I'm still kind of iffy on that E though. That E is just going to look up. It's going to stay. Revolution. Yep, I think I'm going to do it. It's, it's a sacrifice. You know, it, you know, and the E would look good with that, the little middle piece in front of her shoe, but the way the shoe was like kicking into it, I think I would rather have that than the E in front of it, which is taken away from the shoe. So I think I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna roll with that. <laughs>